So the thing that was funny about it was that in order to go to Evo. Oh my gosh, that's you? Okay, that's my sister, that's me, that's my husband in uh, dressed as Dr. Boskanovich and my son <laughs> as DJ. But what happened was about a, so I had the uh, mask of Vega because I had to hide my face because I'm famous. <laughs> and so we went in and got, they were so great to us and they got us in. And about a week before I said to my son something I said, so do you think there'll be a lot of people in costume and like, will that be, can we buy some like costumey stuff there? And he said, mom, it's a tournament. It's not a convention. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, so does that mean we're gonna be like the only people in costume? And he said, maybe. <laughs> so I went, oh great. I'm thinking it's just nothing but people in costume. They'd be more recognizable. Right? <laughs> so we go there and what happens is cosplay means that people want to have their picture taken with you. So now I'm in a mask. Now people are coming over going, hey, can I get a picture with you, Vega? And I'm like, okay. And now I'm t like doing a lot of pictures. I've got a claw with a real knife did you do it. it. Did you do a lower voice? Cause, cause, cause no, I just was sort of like, okay. And I real and then by the end of the night, just to wrap this up and start talking about Scream Queens, which amazing. I promise we're going we're to gonna do. We're going to get to it. Well, we're going to get is, to this it. This is a past conversation from when we did spare so parts. So what I ended up doing is I, that end of that first day, I tweeted so that I was there was in a mask, <laughs> and I took a picture of me in the mask and out of the mask, and then that's when it became Everyone. fun because then people were like, that was her? So <laughs> anyway, my attempt at trying to just sort of Blend in and go to Evo kind of failed because uh, we w there weren't there were a lot of people in shorts and t-shirts. And you played Vega at the, tur at the at the tournament, right? I did play Vega at the tournament. Right, rock it on! Yes, this this is this is I'm a Ryu Ken guy. You're a Cami and Vega. Uh, you know what? Do you Vega. do you listen to uh, Ninja Sex Party at all? I don't, but I'm going to okay, now. There's a very funny Ryu Ken song. I will check it um, out. I like Ryu Ken. Um, and yes, and Vega they are putting in Street Fighter V. Uh, you know, one thing I love about uh, the but this current state of television is this, this is a golden age of TV. This is the place where everyone wants to be. It's great writing. It's, you know, Ryan Murphy's incredible. But great horror, writing. Like, I agree. Horror has changed so much. You, yeah, yeah. you go back to like 78, obviously I mentioned Halloween. There were five deaths in that movie. Yeah. The remake had over 22 yeah, deaths, okay? So I want to ask you about why you think violence has become such a prominent thing in horror films and do you think it's, do you think it's just the times? Uh, I have no opinion. I don't watch horror films. I have no interest in horror films. Um, I, the only thing I know is that we are a country of addicts. Mm. We are addicted to carbohydrates. We are addicted to caffeine. As we have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Product placement. <laughs> we are addicted to our mobile devices. We are addicted, people. And I think what happens is that anything that takes off the next iteration of it is just more and more and more and more and more and then it becomes so big and crazy that it then dies. Mm. And then the next thing happens. And then it's unique and fabulous and then we replicate it. And every time you replicate it, you add, you know, it grows and grows and grows. And I just think it's the nature of our society being addicts. Mm. And I really, I'm not suggesting on any level that this is, uh, it is an addiction that is a sort of social uh, uh, norm. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how many of you out there have young teenagers who have these devices mm -hmm. and have Instagram and Snapchat and all the rest of it and try to get them off it. I think it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happened with horror movies. That's my. Uh, Analysis, even though uh, I, I'm not someone who has frequented them at all. Well, I agree with you. Now you're obviously. Why aren't you running the universe? I should be. Why aren't you? Why aren't we doing? Why this? aren't you hosting your own late night show? Let's do this. No, I'm not going to do it. You, you, I'm not My doing it. My first guest. I will add when you are hosting your own show. Deal. We'll bring it. No, we're sitting here talking right now. You are currently filming this show, Screen Queens, and I want to ask you as you come here to do press. Can I ask just like where you are technically in the show, like episode wise? Yes, we're on episode ten of thirteen. And like like like, story, like for example, when people watch this interview, what what will they see that you're shooting now without giving any spoilers? It's kind of like Oof. 
Can you, like, can I, you walk around well, that? Well, I tweeted today what we just shot. So um, Ryan Murphy asked me to tweet it because he was so delighted with it. It is a picture of me um, uh, where we recreated the scene from Psycho in the shower uh, with me. Um, which is something I have avoided my entire life. Mm. I've been an actress since I was 19. I'm 56. I have said zero tolerance for any stepping into anything that had to do with my parents. Mm. Um, but they wrote it into this episode, and it felt appropriate. Both my parents have passed on. I've been an actress for a very long time. I'm in the middle of doing this incredible show with the great writing that I get to do at 56. And it was like if ever, if, if the time was right, the time is now. Mm. If not now, when? Mm. And we recreated shot by shot the shower scene. Like the exact edits and everything? Did like you a, not check Twitter I saw, today? No, no, I saw the, the photo okay. before I came in here, but I, wanted, I didn't know you actually yeah. recreated the shot for shot that Hitchcock did. Uh, I think if you read tweets, I know, I not saw, just look at them. I saw the photo. You might actually I see you. recreated oh my gosh. mom's shower scene. So, that, I mean, that was an iconic moment because of the way it was cut with the, with the blood and well, the Well, that and the, was the an syrup. iconic moment because Hitchcock had the same controls that Ryan Murphy has. So Hitchcock, do you know the whole, if you have time, go back through the story of Psycho. Yeah. And how Hitchcock put up his own money and how he had instructed them to shut the doors of the theater and not let people in after a certain point. Like he understood what killing my mother <laughs> 20 minutes, 25 minutes into the movie would do. And he had tremendous control over the experience for people. And that's what Ryan Murphy has. I've been debating this for years, and hopefully you can clear this up for me. How did Hitchcock get the shot of the shower looking up? Did he build a bigger, I'm assuming you recreated it. How did Ryan Murphy do it? Is, is it a bigger shower head in Screen Queens? I've always wanted to know this. Obviously, you're dealing with a, a show where we don't know who the killer is. And I know, I believe somewhere Ryan Murphy did say that the killer possibly was in episode one somewhere, which I won't say what it is. We're keeping this, keep, we're keeping this uh, down. But I wanted to know, you, you've obviously started a movie with a very crazy killer. How different would the show be if Michael Myers was the killer? <laughs> well, um, here's what I'm going to say. Nobody knows who the killer is on, on our set. Not one human being. What? The only person who knows is Ryan Murphy, Brad Felchuk, and Ian Brennan. Whoa. That's it. Um, and that is the magic of Ryan Murphy and his company, is that he understands that you have to withhold everything. So we are all applying ourselves every day um, with the understanding that the next script could come in and we could read that we're dead. It's just the nature of the beast. None of us have contracts beyond this year. There is no like, well, of course you're going to do your show. <laughs> there is none of that. And if you look at Psycho, Psycho, he killed a major movie star 20 minutes into the movie. Yep. So here you have all of these very well-known starlets and st young actors, wonderful young actors, Glenn Powell. Oh, my God. He's the young man I bed in the first episode. <laughs> Ooh, spoiler alert. I think maybe I have a, a, some attraction to the younger species, but... Ooh, I maybe shouldn't have said that, because you're now going to have to be watching for it. But anyway, he's fantastic in the show. Anyway, that's the truth. We don't know, we don't know about anything. That's awesome, Jamie. This has been one of the okay, greatest honors wait of my life. Thank you so much. you have your own... Network. I am waiting. I will be waiting. And uh, you're the greatest. Uh, you might be the greatest. Thank so you so much. Get in it. Get on it. Thank you. Break. Break out. I will. I Fox. will. Fox. That's right. Him. Now. <laughs> really. Is there a late night Fox show? I don't think so. My first guest. Get in the game. Street Fighter tournament. Come on. Together. We'll do a Street Fighter tournament with your son. He's kind of come in and play. We have the first thing, and then wh who's our musical guest? Can we do a metal band, Iron Maiden? Iron Maiden. Can we do Maiden? You're gonna be. What's the name of your show? I don't know. Geeking out with Kevin McCarthy. Geeking out. With Kevin McCarthy. I just think geeking out with Kevin McCarthy on Fox late night. <laughs> Iron Maiden. Me playing Street Fighter. I'm gonna be Cammy. You're gonna be Ryu. Ryu Ken, and maybe Tom will be DJ, and we'll like throw it down. 